Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee. I hope you can see me behind this big box. We've got another video for you. This time we're doing a CCTV camera system. Now, I'm good at putting the cameras up and drilling the holes and running the cables. Could do that in my sleep. But when it comes to the techie part, I've got Dylan Garton here, who is our resident technical expert on Skill Builder. He does the complicated stuff. So Dylan, tell us about this. Okay. This is an eight camera system from Foscam, which we got from Rykelt.com. Uh, everything you need is in the box. You've got all the cables you need, eight cameras, and a little NVR box, which does all of the clever stuff, the recording, and it gives you your interface What's an into NVR the system. What's NVR box? Uh, Come on. That's a network video recorder. Right. Yeah. Uh, all of the cameras are HD, so they give you the clarity so that you can see number plates, you can see people's faces, see everything that you need to see. It uses power over Ethernet, so that means that your picture and your power is coming through the same cable, so you don't have to run separate power supplies. Well, that's going to save me loads of time, actually, because that does take up a lot of time, putting Absolutely. power supplies to cameras. That's, that's good. Yeah. Um, and it's also plug and play, which means, as you would expect, you plug the cameras in. About 30 seconds later, it's done all of the configuring for you, and the picture just magically appears. I might not need you after all, then. <laughs> If it's that simple, you know, I've, I've never done it before, but I'm sure I could. Go on, that's right. Um, and it is IP66, which a lot of people might think, of course it is, everything's got to have that protection. But some of them are IP65, which isn't quite as good. So you've got protection from dust and water ingress. But I have to say, the connector for the camera isn't actually waterproof. So unless you're drilling the hole directly through the wall and mounting the camera with a cable going through the wall. Into a dry position. Yeah, into a dry position. Um, you're gonna need to get an external box, which I think you can get from Rykel as well. Another thing you're gonna need, which isn't in a box, if you're a UK power supply and you don't have that two prong thing, you're gonna need a little adapter to get you into our three pin socket in the UK. But yeah. again, that's something Rykel supply and very cheap, very easy to do, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what else have we got? Uh, it's got motion detection. So that means that you can record just the motion so that if anything happens, you want to play back the footage. You're not going through loads of hours. You're just going directly to where the motion was recorded. Oh, okay. That's brilliant. Yeah. So if I'm away for, on holiday, I'm taking this, would this give us two weeks worth of recording if I'm away for two weeks? Well, it's got a two terabyte hard drive, which is very generous, um, but you can't get a figure for exactly how much footage you can store because you can have different quality settings but you're definitely going to be getting weeks of material rather than days and um, right so if you lowered the quality on the camera yeah. you could get a longer recording time on it yeah absolutely but you would lose a little bit of definition on the camera so you might not recognize yeah it looks um yeah it'll, it'll look a little bit more compressed so you can just play with it i think once you've had the system up and running for a few few days you'll realize you'll figure out the quality setting that you want okay. and say right okay that looks okay and I'm going to get about a month's worth of footage and one really handy feature is that it keeps the most up-to-date footage so when it's full it doesn't dumps. bother you it doesn't bother you it dumps the old stuff oh okay all right so, so so long as you're back from the Caribbean within a month or so you should be all right yeah that's yeah. right so that's a, a nice feature um, it's also got night vision so that once it gets dips below uh, a certain uh, lux level. Yeah, gets uh, dark. Look, <laughs> the way it complicates everything. Once it gets dark. Once it gets dark, it switches to night vision, which is black and white, and you can see the little ring of lights around the lens. Oh, how and, nice. and it's very clear as well. You can still see a lot of the detail that you'd see in the day. You can see it at night as yeah, well. Yeah, okay. So anything else we need to know about it? Um, no, I don't think there's anything else apart from you can, uh, there's an app and also you can view the images through a web browser remotely as well. Oh, well, okay, right. Well, I'm going to get cracking. I'm going to go up there and start drilling and fixing these cameras up in the appointed positions. And when I've done that, you're going to take the cables and plug them in, do the easy bit. That's right. I'm going to sit in the warm and just take the cables through the hole and plug them all into the box and uh, we'll go through the setup. Brilliant. Okay.
Okay, now I've had a chance to set up the MVR here. Roger and Duncan have gone home, and as you can see, they've managed to set up five cameras. It takes quite a long time to chase all those cables through, as you saw earlier on. So now I'm just gonna take you through how the NVR works. And um, I was gonna put this in the cupboard because I thought it might be a bit noisy, but actually it's not too bad. It's very quiet, so I think I can live with it on the desktop here. That's not gonna be a problem. So I'm coming out of the HDMI into this 24 inch LCD screen here, and it's looking very good. So let's have a look at the interface and see how it works. Okay, so. Now, each screen in the top left has the date and the time and the name of the camera. And as you can see, the name is the same on all of those. So we're gonna change that in a moment so they're more descriptive. Do a single left click on one of the screens. You'll get the playback icon, the record, the channel rename and the full screen button. And you can see that that little record symbol has come up. That means it's recording. And this little bell symbol here means that it's recording because it's detected motion. Now you can set it up to record permanently, which is what I'm gonna do in a moment because we've got two terabyte hard drive in there. And when it gets to, when it's filled the space, it just starts dumping the old footage. So it's pretty good just to leave everything on record, have the alert on there as well so that you can see on the timeline where the movement was but we've got loads of space so we can just record all the time. With a right mouse click, you have all of these options. You've got just one screen, four if you've only got four and you wanna add some other cameras later. If you go to that, you can choose which channels you're gonna have in your four. So go okay. So we'll take it back to the nine screen view. And then the next, it's the menu, we'll have a look at that in a moment. Color settings, that lets you choose hue, brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness. Uh, I'm happy with the default settings on those. The next option, playback, we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, manual record. Now as you can see, we've only got it on record alert at the moment, so that's only gonna record the movement, but as I said, we've got loads of hard drive space, so let's just go to Select all, choose OK. And now you can see all of these other icons have lit up. So that means we're recording on every channel, or rather every channel that's got a camera there at the moment. And the next option, adding devices. Now we had it set to automatic adding. Uh, as you can see, it's put them all in there. It didn't have to do anything. It's given them all an IP address and Next option is PTZ, which is pan, tilt, zoom. Now, the cameras that come with this kit uh, don't have a pan, tilt, zoom feature. You can add those if you want, but I'm not gonna be able to show you because we're using the cameras that came with the system. So, and then lastly, you've got shutdown. Okay, so let's now look at the menu. So left click on there. You can see we've got adding devices. Now that's the same screen that we saw in the top level menu. So we don't need to look at that. Playback, we go here. We've got a calendar here and you can choose the day that you want to look at for the playback. So today's the 9th of November. Let's go back to the 8th. Then you get to choose four channels that you can look at over here. So I'm gonna go for, make it simple. Go one, two, three, and four. Click on search. And then down at the bottom here, it shows you the blue areas are where it's just recorded normally, whether there's movement or not, and the red areas are where something's happened. If you go to any point on the timeline and do a double left click on the mouse, after a short while, it fires them all up. Okay, so now this is playing back yesterday. Now, if you can see that there's loads of little bars there, it may be that you wanna go into the detail, so you can click on the plus there, you can see that playing back, and it could be that you wanna go a bit faster. So if, when you click on there once, you can see that in the corner, can't quite see it very clearly, but it says times two. And you can click on that again and again, and then the top speed is 32 times. If you wanna come back to normal, Now you don't press that, 
Yeah, that's interesting. There's no play to make it go at normal speed. So I'm at times two. And that's made it play at normal speed, even though this icon here is actually the slow motion button. So if I click on that, you can see now at the top here and there and there and there, it says one half speed. And you can go down to one quarter speed and you can go all the way down to one thirty second speed. So there we go, that's how you play back. So let's go back to the main menu now. You've also got a schedule, so it could be that you only want to record at certain points in the day. So choose a channel, so this is camera one. Uh, I've got select ticked there. So now if I drag a box around there, say right, I only want to record up to say eight o'clock in the morning. It selects that area there. And if you want to clear it, go into clear mode and do the same thing again, drag a box around it and clear it. That's how you set your schedule. Device information. Let's have a look at that. Firmware version. Hard disk info showing you that we've got two terabyte hard drive, actually formats as 1.82. Just in case anybody wants to ask the question, how much storage space do you, or how many hours can you record? That'll depend on the settings that we're going to look at in a moment where we go to set the cameras up because you can choose different resolutions, different bit rates. So um, that is a how long is a piece of string question. So anyway, let's get back to it. So that's the hard drive. System log, uh, you can search through there and it will show you things that have happened. Uh, you can see here that channel five at seven minutes past four, there was a motion detection. So that's device information. Now we look at settings. And first option is general. And you can see the device name. Uh, this option is presented when you first turn the box on. So you get to choose your time zone, whether the time is automatically updated, whether it synchronizes the time to all of the cameras. But I'd already chosen that when I turned the box on, but you didn't see that because when you first turn the box on, it's in a very low resolution and the device that I'm using here to record the output doesn't like that mode. So that's why I didn't show you that part. The device name, I don't like that name, FN3108XE, that's the model. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I'm gonna call it NVR. That'll do me, save it. So that was general and now stream. Here is where you set the bit rate and resolution for all of the cameras. We're working on the first camera here. Uh, the first option is stream. You get to choose whether you're looking at mainstream or substream. Mainstream is when the, that camera is blown up to full size. And then substream is when it's in this split into nine mode. So that we can see what we're doing, we go to substream and you can see that it's at 64480, one megabit, 15 frames a second, that's fine. And, um, but now if I save that, if I go back out, and what I wanna do is take camera one full screen. You can either do a double left mouse click, click on here, or you can click it once and then choose the full screen option there. So there it is now, that's the first camera full screen. So now I'm gonna go back to that menu, I'm gonna to go to the settings and the stream. If we look at channel one, you can see We've got the maximum resolution set up. So these cameras are 720p, uh, which is fine for CCTV. You're gonna be able to see all the detail you need. But here's where it gets a bit strange because bear in mind that these cameras came with this system. They're made by the same company. Um, but when you try to say, I mean, one megabit, that's not that much. So let's try and go to two megabit, click on save. He's happy with that. That's fine. Now, the frame rate is 19. And again, that's fine, but what I wanted to do was, because I'm used to working in video, I'm used to 25 frames a second and that fluid movement, so I thought I'll have that, have that on all the, all the cameras. But when I clicked save, it said, this device cannot support the current parameters. So, which is slightly odd because it's not, um, it's not a huge frame rate, 25, and it is being offered, and it does go up to 30. Um, so the maximum I could get it to go to was 19. So 
It's not a huge problem, but you would think that it would be able to cope with 25 frames a second. Uh, but there you go. Oh, the other thing is the, the keyframe interval. This is, on the keyframes, it remembers all of the information in the picture. And then all of the frames in between keyframes only remembers the difference. So if you leave a longer gap, you're not going to see many, you're only going to see the changes in that frame. So on this screen here, all of these areas here will stay the same. And then the only differences are the cars moving across the top of the screen there. So they're the things that are picked up on the frames in between the keyframes. But again, it doesn't make a, a massive difference there. So I would just set it around the, so basically the lower the number, the more the screen is refreshed. So we'll save that. And now I want to go back to the nine screen view. And back to the menu, settings. So we've done stream, now we look at the network. It's got some good network features here. It's, got, uh, it's picked up the IP number from my router, has given it that IP number there. The port number 88, that's gonna come in useful later when you, try, when you want to connect to the device through your web browser you need to add a colon and 88 at the end. So dynamic DNS, the good thing about this is that it provides you with a free unique address for this device. If you would rather use your own dynamic DNS, you can use third party services. You've got four options there. You've got email, you can set it up so that if there's any activity, it can send you an email with a picture. I'm not going to set that up now because we've got enough on our plate already. We've got other stuff to set up, but it can email you pictures. And quite honestly, I think I'd rather use the app. It's going to be easier just to load that up. You've got an FTP option so that you can get the NVR to upload the pictures to your FTP server. Now we're on to display. We've got it at 1080p, 1920 by 1080. That's the highest resolution and that's fine. I think this screen looks really nice. The detail looks really good. Uh, I've set the transparency for the menu system. As you can see, this gray box here is sort of semi-transparent. It's just very handy to be able to see that, especially if you're setting up that middle camera in the nine view, because otherwise you wouldn't even be able to see it. So we've got it set to the highest resolution. So that's the display. So next we've got alarm. Let's look at motion detection. We've got motion detection enabled on channel one. So that's our screen up here. We haven't got the buzzer turned on. I had that feature on earlier and it got annoying quite quickly and I don't need to, I just wanted to see if it worked. But anyway, I've turned the buzzer off and you can choose each camera's settings for sending pictures by email and FTP because it could be that you don't want to get loads of emails on every camera. So you can just selectively choose which cameras are sending information through those. You can set up a detection area as well. So let's have a look at that. It could be that I don't really want to know about the cars that are passing the top of the screen here. I only want to know if someone comes into the driveway. So they're not going to get into the driveway without me selecting that area there. If anyone comes into the driveway now, they're going to get picked up in this area. But all of this at the top is going to be ignored. So now do a right mouse click, save that. And you've got either you've got the detection schedule, sensitivity, a few other settings there. Other alarm. Now these are also quite useful because you're going to want to know if you've lost your hard drive or it's full or there's an error or there's a video loss. Uh, so those ones are quite handy. So I'm going to choose yes for all of those. So they're the alarms. And the last option in settings is OSD, which is on screen display. Settings for channel one. Channel name, I can't change that here. The only things I can change that, this mask thing is ghosted out, I can't do that either. So I can just choose here whether the channel name is displayed and the time. So that's fine, I'm happy to have those default settings there. So I'll save that and now I'm gonna go back again. This is the top level menu now. We've done all of those. The last one to do is system. And as I mentioned earlier, you can set up user accounts. If this is being used in a business environment, could be that you want to allow some people just to look at the footage, but not to monkey around with the settings. So, so that's where you can choose different accounts. So we've just got admin, that's fine. I'm not ever going to need more than that. Upgrade the firmware. You can do a local upgrade 
Uh, if you've got the firmware on a USB stick, you can just plug it into the other USB port on the back. I prefer to go remote upgrade and it checks for the firmware. And then after a while, it comes back to say, your software is up to date, which is good. Uh, so factory reset, not gonna do that. Uh, once you've configured this, you know, it could take a long time. If you spent, uh, you know, like a couple of hours setting this up, it's really useful to be able to export it into a text file. So if you need to set it up again, you can just plug your USB dongle in and then take the settings back into the system. So you can log out so that you can let one of the other users in, reboot or shut down. So it's all set up now. So now I'm just gonna rename all of the cameras so I know what I'm looking at. I click on the pen icon, click in there. Delete all of those. I like a initial cap. So I'm gonna call this drive and save it and then click on the pen icon again. Right click. And there you go, you see it says drive. This one here. So that's pretty much it. It's all set up now. And as I said, I've only got five cameras, but Roger and Duncan did a really good job to get those five done in a day. And now when they come back, we've got, we're gonna do one more in the garden and we don't know whether we're gonna, where we're gonna put the other two. Uh, we're probably gonna put one of them indoors. I don't know, we'll see. But there's just one more thing to tell you about. You may have noticed that the text on all of these cameras sometimes flickers between black and white. And that's because it automatically decides whether it needs to be white text on a dark background or black text on a light background. And sometimes it just can't decide. It's sort of like in that in-between stage. So that's why it flickers. You can see here we've got a, the, the last digit is in white and the rest of it is in black. It might look like an error, but it's actually the NVR being clever. So one other strange thing is I noticed that when I tried to run the web interface, which I'll show you in a minute, it didn't let me access it in Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge. I had to download Firefox, then I had to download some plugins, and eventually I got it working. It looks really nice, but it's just odd that I don't know why it wouldn't support uh, Chrome and Edge. Okay, so now let's have a look at the app. I recommend using a QR code scanner to scan the front of the box because it'll take you to this app. And there are quite a few Foscan ones on the app store, so if you do that, you'll make sure that you've got the right one. Okay, so let's load it up. This is what you first see. We wanna add a new device. And you can either search on your local area network. You can scan the QR code from the interface on the MVR or you can manually enter, and that's what we're gonna do. So now I'm gonna enter my dynamic DNS address of the NVR, so that is, yes, you have to put colon 88 at the end, and then connect. And there we go, it's already found the device, and it's successful, and now you can see it appears in the list. So, if we tap on it, now ah, you can see it straight away, it can see the pictures from the camera. And now you can just flick to the side to get all the different cameras. So that's handy, like that. And then you've got options for taking a screenshot, recording locally to your phone or tablet, image quality, clear or flute, not sure what that means. You can do image rotation, that's an unsupported function because that's the pan at tilt zoom. That's something that's coming soon, I'm not sure what that is. Or you can just do a four up, or the nine. I'm not gonna see an awful lot in the nine there, but it's a really good app. I have to say, it works really well 
over 4G as well. There's no lag or very little lag. Um, you can also play back. So I go to search and go to channel one again. And then if you want to go back, so that's just moments ago. And you can just slide across here to go back to earlier. So if I go back to, here we go. So the, the controls for playback are quite simple on the phone, but you know, it does, does what it needs to do. I am very impressed. We just want to thank our show sponsor. Rykelp is an online retailer for tools, tech, and consumer electronics. Many of their products are up to 20% cheaper than anywhere else in the UK. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe.